Once you have put the proper buttons on the menu, it's best to arrange, color, and size them so they make the most sense in the terms of speed and usability to the point of sale users. Before we go over customizing the buttons themselves, we'll learn about button labels, which are a great way to help organize your point of sale screens. Button labels are completely optional. They are simply non-functioning buttons that display any text that needs to be shown on the screen. To create a label, left click in an empty area, then click the label button to the right of the color palette. This will make the button just visible text. Then you can change the text, text color, and button size to whatever you need to, which we'll go over next. Customizing and arranging buttons is fast and easy. To move a button, simply select it and drag it to its new location. Note that the new location space must be empty and have enough room to fit it in. To change a button's text, select it, then type in the text desired in the button text field. You may need to abbreviate some words so they fit properly. To change the button's text color, click the text color button and choose a new color from the palette that appears, then click OK. The button type drop-down is where you assign a button's function. The types of buttons are item, which is an inventory or service item that will be tendered as part of a customer's purchase, page, which will navigate to the target page listed, Price level determines the price level of the transaction, which is a setting of 1 through 5, 1 being the default. Sale discount, where you match up a sale from a list that was previously set up in items management. And change key set, which navigates to a determined key set. The color palette allows you to choose whichever button color is desired. And using the size buttons, you can make the selected button as tall and as wide as you need to. Just remember that the button's maximum size is determined by how much room it has to expand. The checkbox marked, This button is final, will only need to be unselected if it is used in conjunction with another button which will be pressed right after it. For example, you can have three buttons set for small, medium, and large, and four buttons next to them labeled as Coke, Sprite, Root Beer, and Fanta. This way of setting up item sizes is particularly efficient when ringing in items at the point of sale station, as you only need three size buttons and four item buttons. Otherwise, you would have to set up 12 buttons instead of seven, as shown here. Please note that your item sizes must be set up beforehand in accounting to work this way. In this example, the sizes are the first two numbers of the final item code, and will be set up with the small, medium, and large buttons with 01, 02, and 03. The size buttons will also not have the This button is final check, as it will need to have the item, which is a soda in this case, attached to it. The Coke, Sprite, Root Beer, and Fanta buttons will have the This button is final checked as it completes the item. With this way of setting up your size buttons, simply pressing the Coke button will trigger an item not found response from the POS as the item number will need to have a size entry attached to it. For instance, 014455 is a valid item, but just 4455 is not. The Cannot Repeat checkbox indicates that the item attached can only be listed once per transaction. Its default is unchecked, as the majority of the time it will most likely not be needed. But it can be useful if, for example, you only allow one of a certain item per transaction, such as a daily special. Finally, Accupause allows for you to create items directly in the key setup. To do so, simply press the Create New Item button. The Items Management screen will appear, prompting you to fill in the new item's name, item code number, and other information. Once the item's details are filled in, select the Save and Close button. The new item's information will be attached to the selected button.